today we're going to be looking at what's new in Autodesk Inventor 2018 so far. My name's Matthew McKnight. I'm a technical specialist. I work for Autodesk out of uh, one of our Melbourne offices and, uh, and I'm here to support our customers across Australia and New Zealand who are you know, using our manufacturing technology to, to complement their business workflows. Now you might be thinking, well, you know, so far, what do we mean by that? Well, if you've started using uh, 2018, you probably already understand what it is that I'm referring to because you will have seen a number of updates uh, that will justify my, my, my calling or my titling this uh, presentation so far. So if we look back in history at the way that uh, a new release of Inventor would have occurred, let's go back to say 2015 or 2016, you would have seen the, the release come out around March or April and it would have had a whole heap of new features and functionality that would have been released as a part of that major release. And then through the course of the year, there would have been a, a series of further releases or service packs that would have come out to resolve uh, you know, any bug fixes uh, resulting um, you know, throughout the course of that release. And, and some small changes to the, the design and functionality of the software. Uh, the reality is, is that Autodesk is now moving to a much more incremental updating of Inventor. And that's no more evident in today's session where we'll be actually stepping through a lot of those changes. So if we look at the 2018 release, it was back around the end of March or early April, we saw the announcement and the availability of Inventor 2018. Uh, and then subsequently around middle of the year in July, we saw the 2018 dot one release and then in November we had the 2018 dot two release. Now at each stage we saw a smaller subset of technology and enhancements to the um, to the release. So the initial 2018 release wouldn't may not have been as big as what we would have maybe previously seen in say a 2016 release. But what we are seeing is more incremental updating of the software. And the 2018 dot one release brought with it a whole new range of features, functionality, enhancements, workflows, as did the 2018.2 release. Now we're going to be looking at these incrementally at the updates and the impact of those changes to understand you know, this in a little bit more context. Um, but over the course of the next hour, this will give you a lot of insight into the amount of functionality that's gone on. Because if you were to look at the 2018, uh, re release in isolation, you would probably thinking this is maybe a minor release uh, annual release in comparison. It's not that at all. It's simply for the fact that the way that we're delivering updates is changing. So let's have a look at the 2018 release and focus predominantly on a number of key areas in which we categorize the enhancements and new functionality and workflows that are being brought into the software. Um, firstly, we talk about professional grade design and this is really about design workflows that enable you to take your geometry from sketching through to complex assembly modeling and help you design faster and improve the performance of the way that you work. Uh, secondly, we'll be looking at ex the expanded interoperability and this is really comes about um, through the, the workflows of teams, often multidisciplinary and the way that they can more efficiently work with data from a variety of different sources. And then thirdly, we'll be looking at the inventor experiences and how it can be enhanced, both productivity and flexibility based on the feedback from users just, as, just like yourselves. <clears throat> now, if we look firstly at professional grade design, again, this comes down to helping engineers drive innovation in their design work and help them create better products and more efficient processes. Uh, to stay ahead, you often need to work faster, you need um, tools that are more powerful, and you need help to better realize performance and productivity in your workplace. And that's what we believe 2018 delivers, exactly that. So let's look at some of the, you know, the details of some of the new, new technology and workflows and enhancements as a part of this release. So first uh, one that I want to highlight is what's called model-based definition. 
Uh, the acronym that you'll often heard thrown around is MBD. And this is a powerful set of tools, annotation tools, that enable you to apply annotation and information to your 3D model directly to the model. Uh, it comes with Integrated Tolerance Advisor that helps you check the health of your tolerance scheme and it lists any potential issues or errors and other information that you might need to be displayed. Now, once your, your model has been annotated, you can then move that through uh, to a 3D PDF or share that as a STEP AP2425 file. Or that information can be used to help you document your designs in a traditional 2D drawing format. What does that workflow look like? And I'm going to try and highlight as much of these, as many of these things through videos. Uh, now, firstly, I'll highlight that these, this workflow is specific to uh, part files in the 2018 release. Uh, this is really about driving collaboration by enabling machining, inspection and work instructions and all of this information to be attached directly to the 3D model. There is a dedicated environment, so you'll notice here that we're working inside the Annotate tab. And with inside there, there is a specific set of annotation tools and workflows that enable you to insert annotations and work with them. Uh, you'll notice uh, that these enable you to apply annotations, dimensions, and the likes, uh, feature control frames as well, specific to your needs. You'll notice that well, there's a tolerance advisor tool, again, for resolving common issues when working with tolerances. And you'll also see that you can set up design views, like you would in a drawing, that capture specific orientations of the model and the annotations that you need placed on that view. Now, this information then can be shared via a 3D PDF export, which captures the information that you want to as part of that tra translation process. You can see here the views and annotations are brought across as part of that. Now further to that, we also have the STEP AP242 file format, which is an industry standard protocol for sharing model-based definition information. And uh, you can also leverage this information with inside of a drawing. So you notice here that we place some standard views, but then we're going to leverage the information, the annotations that we've already placed using the workflow onto the drawing. So again, helping you speed up that process of reusing information you've already inserted. So again, this is really about trying to drive collaboration by enabling you to share more information more easily uh, and, and more collaboratively in your workplace. <clears throat> now there's been a number of other enhancements, including those to sheet metal. Uh, Multi-body sheet metal parts now support unique rules and thickness for each body. And multi-body rules can be applied to bodies in the browser or while creating new bodies within the face, contour flange, contour roll and lofted flange dialog boxes. There's also a number of changes in the sketching environment. You can auto project geometry when dimensioning or constraining a sketch. Now previously when you added dimensions or constraints to sketch geometry with a perpendicular work plane, you had to use the project geometry command to project the selected work plane. But now when you select a plane that is perpendicular to the sketch, you were dimensioning or constraining, the selected work plane is automatically projected when using certain commands. Also, the projected sketch references are now maintained after redefining a sketch. A sketch. Now previously, if you redefine the plane that a part or assembly sketch was created on, the projected references were lost. But now if you redefine the sketch plane, the associativity is maintained and all sketch items should remain yellow. And there's been a number of enhancements for when it comes to working with large assemblies. And all documents benefit to some degree, but the most noticeable improvements are seen when working with large assemblies and large assembly drawings. Some examples of this include, you'll often notice uh, a, a faster experience or a better experience when working with hidden line removed view display. Uh, you'll notice that view navigation, whether it's pan, zoom and orbit should be faster. And you'll see that drawing view creation, preview and edit should also be uh, faster than you previously used to. 
Now, it's not uncommon for me to visit customers across Australia and New Zealand and see them designing and documenting you know, their inventor assemblies that can easily consist of tens of thousands of components. And that's why it's great to see a number of these enhancements. You'll notice that the open dialog box enables you to quickly and easily access the express mode, allowing large assemblies to open much faster than previous releases. You'll notice that uh, when moving, panning and rotating, you should see noticeably uh, better performance and component selection should be instantaneous. Drawing view creation is faster along with 2D hidden uh, line view representations. And defer updates uh, can be applied where users can control when updates to models are moved to the drawing environment. And when it comes to placing new views, uh, you can change the way that the view preview is displayed by turning off geometry. This is going to promote uh, faster drawing view placement and creation by excluding a lot of the, um, the visuals as a part of that process until the view is actually in the right position. So again, enhancements to speed up that process that have already been uh, welcomed by a number of users around um, this part of uh, the, um, the user base. Expanded interoperability. Now this is um, uh, looking at a, another group of enhancements that are really there to enable capabilities that enhance the way that we can work with design data of various different file formats. And that's no more evident in the 2018 release, which looks at a number of different segments in the way that we, sh that we work with and share information. First of which is the shrink wrap tools, which have been enhanced for more control. Improve, it's got a new and improved user interface and improved workflow as well. You can now leverage view and level of detail representations to quickly define lightweight models. BIM content has also been updated as well and, and, and enhanced for simplification, authoring and the publishing workflows. The 2018 release lets you publish directly to both an IFC file and a Revit file format, which is a .RFA file. So this is again been welcomed by the community who are using in building product manufacturing industries. And with a thriving construction industry across Australia and New Zealand, uh, these are, you know, uh, these are the types of, of um, uh, new features and functionalities and enhancements that really customers have been um, looking forward to, to using. You can see here that the BIM content tools are now contained inside of a single environment. This enables you to simplify, author and publish BIM content directly. The shrink wrap tools, and these are some new tools, enables you to see what's included and excluded from the selection. And there's also some hole and pocket removal workflows that have been improved and you can now remove fillets and chamfers as well. The new preview tool helps you see exactly what is being removed. And Revit, families, uh, Revit family categories are now supported as is the export to Revit, the Revit file format, which is now possible. And remember, as a building product manufacturer, you can now publish directly to Configurator 360 that enables you to publish your designs on a website, enabling your customers or your resellers or your salespeople to uh, configure designs without interrupting the design and engineering department. So again, a number of enhancements that significantly improve the workflow of working with um, uh, data that you're trying to move through to BIM Ready content. Furthermore, uh, there's been a number of changes in particular way that we can work with mesh data. Uh, there's now support for displaying and documenting mesh objects, which has been added to drawing views. And mesh objects participate in all view, view types and can be dimensioned and annotated and sectioned as well. You'll also note that with the 2018 release that there's been in some enhancements to the AnyCAD technology, which has been around for a few releases now. With 2018, in uh, AutoCAD, oh, sorry, AnyCAD has been expanded to allow you to leverage Inventor 2018 files in your 2017 designs. So this means that you can now work with others who are on versions of Inventor that are earlier or later than the version you're working in. Uh, to help you identify the version of the file, uh, you'll find that in the open dialog box, this is now displayed. You can see there on the upper right 
right hand side of the screen, it actually shows you what version of Inventor the file is that you're griping. Uh, starting with Inventor 2017, you can reference future or newer versions of Inventor parts and assembly files in an earlier version of Inventor. For example, you can now reference an Inventor 2018 file with inside of Inventor 2017. The requirement for doing so is that Inventor 2017 needs to be on the dot for release to open a 2018 file version. Uh, also, uh, Inventor 2018 continues to enhance the core AnyCAD workflows with more robust support of new features you add to non-native Inventor files. So after the source file is updated, your Inventor-based features will also be preserved as part of that workflow. And we'll see a little bit more of this in action, which will better explain that. And furthermore, the uh, DWG underlay workflow has been improved. You can now import your DWG file directly into an assembly using the place components command. You can also select multiple DWG files when creating more than one underlay. You can open an AutoCAD DWG file directly from the right-click context menu in your Parter Assembly model browser, node in the Inventor, and automatically project certain types of DWG geometry when you enable the, an option, and, and this is a new option, under the Application Options, Sketch, Auto Project Edges during Curve Creation. So again, let's have a quick look at some of this in action. Uh, and it's not uncommon for manufacturers to use data from a number of different data sources in their workflows. And these could be both Autodesk-based or they might even be from third parties. And, and hopefully you'll see through this an illustration of what we're talking about. So this is a PTC Creo file that's been brought in to Inventor using the AnyCAD workflow. You can see that we can constrain the component with inside of our environment. You will notice here that there is an interference in our design, which requires us to cut away a part of that component that's been imported. Now, the question is what happens if the, you know, the supplier of this uh, motor wants to change the design? They have to modify it for one reason or another. What happens to the updates that we've made, it to, made to this referenced file? Well, now with the changes to Inventor, the updates flow through. The change to the Creo file, and you can see that happening here, uh, then include any downstream cuts we've included to remove the interference. Okay, so you'll see now a much more tighter integration of that workflow. Now another enhancement as we discussed is backward compatibility for 2017 users uh, and forward compatibility workflows have existed for you know, some time but this, 20, this backward compatibility enables users of 2017.4 to open 2018 files and reference them. Now, uh, there's also uh, expanded support for mesh data. So for those of you who are using this as maybe a 3D printing workflow or maybe it's scan data, which are two of the common reasons for using mesh data, you can now bring in and constrain your geometry with inside of the assembly environment. You can also section, well, use your mesh data to create um, views, section, and then detail those with inside of the drawing environment as well. So they, in many respects, they act as though they're a native file that's been created with inside of Inventor. So some nice little improvements there in a number of different key areas when working with uh, design data of various different fi uh, file types. Now some other areas that have been uh, improved in this area is the presentation environment with inside of Inventor 2018 now allows for support of surface data and your surface files can be included in uh, window selections, component tweaks. You can use surfaces to even orient uh, the tweak triad. And that brings us to the inventor experience. And this is about ways that your feedback from users and customers who use Inventor provide us feedback on ways that we can enhance the software to improve the workflows and functionality thereof. And this really is a, a critical component of the development of the software. And you can see a large number of uh, enhancements have been made. So let's quickly look through some of those changes that have taken place. So firstly, the um, browser enhance, enhancements. This is arguably one of my favorite uh, changes. And it's probably one of the first things you'll actually notice once you move from, say, 2017 to 2018. 
Uh, this is about saving you time uh, and provides a new browser experience that enables you to find things quickly and easily and in the current active document with a new search capabilities with inside of the browser. In an assembly file, you can use filter tools to help narrow down your search and you can even move and dock each tab to your preferred way of working. Uh, you'll find that the measure tool has also been enhanced and changed here. So um, let me just make sure there's no questions at this stage. So um, what you'll find is that uh, there's now a, a single measure command and uh, you can perform all measure workflows from the new measure tool panel. This displays a lot of rich information for each selection with a single click and you can easily measure angles and identify measure selections in the graphics window. And these are just a, a sum of the numerous changes that have been made to the, uh, the measure tool. We've seen some changes made to, you know, stand, what, are, what, what would otherwise be classified as standard features. Uh, things like chamfers, where you can now create a chamfer that does not require an, an entire edge, so it, it's a partial chamfer. And you'll find that, that we have now a, a new tab called partial, which is added to the chamfer dialog box and this supports the creation of the partial chamfers. And extrude, you can now use the new distance from face option in the extrude dialog box to start an extrusion from a face or work plane with a distance. And because distance from face creates one central entry point for modifying the geometry, no additional steps to make sketches or work planes are needed. So this is really a productivity workflow improvement. Uh, when it comes to uh, using the hole command, you can now create a symmetric hole um, that extrudes in two directions. And what would traditionally be the flip termination button has been replaced with a direction one and direction two buttons. You can now use the new option, which is called extend start on the hole dialog box to extend the start face of a hole to the first place where there is no intersection with the target body. And the purpose of using this new feature, this extend start feature, is to remove any fragments that might result from the creation of the hole. And you can see that in the right hand side image which shows a hole which is overlapping with a fillet and if in previous years if we'd placed this um, uh, counterboard hole you would have found that it would have left a fragment from the edge of the fillet above the hole. Using this extend start removes that fragment. The surface trim apply button uh, so when you're using the, the trim surface um, uh, tool with inside of Inventor, you'll now find that the dialog can stay open. You can hit apply and then reuse the trim surface dialog for another trim surface um, workflow. So you can continue to use this without having to reopen it. Uh, furthermore, there's a number of other quick changes. So you can add a text border around text and lead, leader text if you like. You've now also got the ability to be able to uh, sort the bill of materials via a string. And there's also the parameter dialog uh, that now includes consume by column and an additional by features filter as well. So let's, uh, oop, not before I show you some of these, I've got one more um, page to show and that is the, the ability to export PDF. Now this was uh, recently introduced, I think it was the 2017 release, was the ability to be able to export to PDF. Well now there's been some enhancements to this. The uh, from and to values specified for sheets in range are no longer session based. And you'll also find that now on publishing your PDF, you've got an option there prior to publishing which is called display published file and viewer. So once the file is actually published, if you've selected this, it will actually open the PDF file in the viewer that you've got selected by your system. Now these are just some of the enhancements that have been made since um, March 2016. There's been over 50 ideas enhancements that have been submitted by users of the technology and then, in, then implemented into the software. So let's have a quick look at this workflow and remember that these are features and workflows that have come based on feedback from users just like you. So firstly, the partial uh, chamfers, you'll now see that it's possible to do this in the tw in, with inside of Inventor 2018, 
including the ability to be able to create setbacks from one or both ends of that um, chamfered edge. You can display from face, oh, sorry, the distance from face functionality now saves the use of multiple features by allowing users to quickly and easily create features offset from a face. And you'll see that rotating around, we have that curved surface that's offset from the face that would have traditionally required a couple of features. Hold terminations are now bidirectional. And you'll notice here that that's apparent when we can create a hole in both directions uh, that's through all, cutting out all of the, um, the body in both directions. Uh, and there's also a number of other improvements to the hole, to the hole tool. Uh, the spot face with this zero depth allows users to accurately place fasteners in areas which would otherwise be harder to locate or hard to locate them. And then you also have the extend start functionality. And this is, like I said earlier, where you've got a fillet that might be overlapping with the geometry that you're trying to create. This will help remove that, um, which would otherwise require an additional feature. You've got the ability to be able to, to sort your bills and materials and part lists uh, using a text string, giving you more options for the ways that you organize that. And you'll also know that the measure tool has been improved uh, to be more intuitive and more helpful. This is a single measure tool and it adjusts based on your selection. And you'll note that the measure tool panel provides more up-to-date information relevant to your selection in a clearer manner than before. So again, numerous updates across numerous different aspects of the software that have all come as a result of feedback from customers using the technology. So that sort of wraps up the 2018 update. Uh, let's have a quick look at some of the changes that have taken place uh, across uh, professional design grade where we had some large assembly design changes. We had the inclusion of model-based definition for parts. And then when we looked at expanded interoperability, we had AnyCAD for Inventor, we had some new BIM content creation workflows, and we had uh, new, new capabilities working with mesh data and drawings. And then when we looked at the Inventor experience, we have things like measure and browser improvements, we have interference analysis and sketch and part modeling. So quite a wide ranging set of uh, new features and functionality. And this is just some of those that are available. There's more that aren't shown as part of this presentation. Now, like I said, the 2018 release was an initial release for the 28 series of up, 2018 series of updates, but the 2018.1 release, which came out in July this year, also added to that initial release. And we saw new functionality in each of those three categories that we talked about before. So again, if we look at these in isolation, understand how these were rolled out, you'll see if we look at professional grade design, which again is really about providing engineers with tools and workflows that help them design far, faster and improve performance. So uh, now you might be wondering why we're we showing model-based definition again, and that is because with the 2018 release, and you might recall, this was specific to parts only. The 2018.1 release was adding functionality that enabled you to work with 3D annotations uh, or model-based definition with inside the assembly environment as well. So this extended the capabilities of the previous technology that had been released. Let's have a quick look at that workflow. Um, now, as discussed, you know, this is really an expansion of the capabilities that already came about, and it's really about being able to share information uh, firstly, you'll notice that this is a specific environment with annotations and dimensions, you know, specifically suited to assemblies. Things like dimensions, whole information, surface texture, as well as leader text and general notes are all capabilities with inside this environment. Uh, you'll see that we can also assign design views, which is something we're also able to do in both part and the assembly environment. And these are like standard views where you can capture a position as well as the information shown on them. And this information then can be exported to either 3D PDF or STEP AP242 file format, allowing you to then use that for downstream consumption. And don't forget that, again, this information can be used as part of a 2D documentation process where you can leverage the annotations that are being assigned here as part of your 2D um, uh, workflow as well. Now, further to that, there was also some changes to iLogic. Uh, and this included new robust event, a new what's called a new robust events trigger workflow. 
Now the rules trigger uh, rules triggered by events dialog box, which was previously available, has subsequently been re replaced by the what's called event trigger dialog box. Now using event triggers, you can map a rule to an event so that the rule will automatically run when the event occurs. And you can see that there are a number of supported triggers, including a new document, before and after a save of a document, and material change. Now we also, in the 2018 release, saw improvements when working with large assemblies, both inside the assembly and the drawing. There was some further improvements to this workflow as well. Uh, drawing view updates now occur faster due to a change in how view edits are processed. So in response to the 3D model being modified or edited, drawing views update only the portion of the, the view that has changed. And you can see here from internal testing, this is resulting in an improvement in uh, processing time for updating those changes. We also, with the 2018.1 release of Inventor, saw an expanded interoperability when it came to working with uh, other file formats. Now we mentioned before that it, you know this is an important uh, category for us when it comes to looking at ways of improving Inventor. And with the 2018.1 release, we've now included the ability to be able to work with Solid Edge data as a part of that workflow. So you can now import Solid Edge files with an option to either convert or to create an AnyCAD reference. And importing a Solid Edge file as an AnyCAD reference maintains the link to the, the original file, which enables you to monitor and update the model with any changes that occur. And just for your information, you can also use Task Scheduler to automate the importing of these files, including those, any, those um, Solid Edge AnyCAD references. So what does that workflow look like? Well, it looks very similar to what it does for any other format such as um, Solid Edge, uh, SolidWorks or PTC Creo. Um, but let's have a quick look at it. So here we are inside of Inventor. We are, we've given the choice of either converting or referencing the design. In referencing it, we're actually activating the AnyCAD reference there. But you'll notice that if we were to go back to Solid Edge and make a change to our design, which is happening here, uh, then on either overriding the previous file or replacing the previous file, Inventor is actually smart enough to recognize using that reference that the file is outdated and it will subsequently update the changes that have taken place. So we're great. It's really just expanding on uh, the already wide range of capabilities in supporting any CAD workflows. And then when we look through to the inventor experience, and again, remembering this comes from a lot of, or this you know, relates to enhancements and productivity and flexibility workflows that come from user feedback, there's been a number of key changes here. Firstly, you can make projecting geometry as construction geometry, the default behavior when you set, with a new setting with inside of the application options dialog box on the sketch tab and you'll see here on the right hand side the option is called project objects as construction objects or as, as construction geometry sorry uh, with this option selected you, you don't have to continually toggle the construction command when creating sketch geometry when it's selected every time you project geometry the geometry will will automatically be check, projected as construction geometry Notice, however, that by default, this option is deselected. So if you want to activate this, you'll need to go into the application option sketch and then activate that option. Uh, furthermore, you can now select a weld bead from a sub-assembly to add as a participant in an assembly feature in the top assembly when the weld bead is added after you create an assembly feature. You can see there that the, the image illustrates each step or each phase of doing that and the, the result and consequences. When it comes to exporting a bill of materials or a part list, you'll now notice that thumbnail, thumbnail images are now exported along with the other information and the thumb, there's now a thumbnail column that's included as part of that bill of materials or it must be included as part of the bill of materials to export that information to the external file. So if you're wondering why it's not there, make sure that you have the thumbnail column added in the first place. So again, that was the 2018.1 release. Let's have a quick look at you know, a summary of some of the changes that have taken place. We can already see that the 2018 
uh, features and functionality. Uh, when it comes to the 2018.1 under professional grade design, we have the new workflow of using model-based definition for assemblies. We have the changes around global triggers for iLogic and we have the performance enhancements associated with the drawing updates. Uh, when it comes to expanded interoperability, we now have workflows that enable you to create an AnyCAD link to solid edge files. And with inside of the inventor experience, we have a whole range of new inventor idea enhancements that have come from users uh, of the software. Now, as recently as November, the 2018.2 release um, was made available to users and customers of Inventor or the product design collection or the uh, or a suite if you're still on the suites that enables you to access a whole new range of features and functionality that's available. Let's have a quick look at these again, looking at them in their categories. In this instance focusing on uh, the professional grade design, looking at uh, you know the tools and workflows that help you design faster and improve your performance. Now we've seen the implementation of model-based design in parts in 2018 initial release, then we saw the assemblies out of the 2018.1 release. With Inventor 2018.2, you now see support for 3D annotations has been added to DWF export. So for easy access, the, the export to DWF command has been added to the export panel in the part and assembly annotation tab. So you should see that across the top of the screen now. And then invisible annotations are exported as hidden in the DWF, but their visibility can be toggled on in the ex exported DWF file. You'll also note that exported 3D PDF files now support associative face highlight for tolerance uh, annotations that reference multiple faces. So you might have a, um, a feature control frame that's actually you know, applying some sort of feature control across multiple faces when you select that annotation inside of the PDF, it should highlight the multiple faces that that applies to. And you'll also note that the all round symbol has been added to feature control frames for the profile of a surface as is shown in the top right image in that, um, in that screenshot there. Now when it comes to sheet metal, we saw some improvements to sheet metal in the 2018.1 release in, in with inside of Inventor for 2018.2, this lets you specify different unfold rules for features in a body. But there was the, and but the problem was there was no way of easily being able to resync features if you decided later on that you actually wanted to have a common uh, unfold rule across multiple uh, features. With the 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 2018.2 release. This now includes the ability to be able to, in one click, uh, associate multiple unfolds to the same unfold rule which you previously may have set as different ones. So that speeds up the process of being able to uh, do this. Uh, also iLogic, which we saw some improvements in the 2018.1 with inside of Inventor 2018.2. Again, we see a number of enhancements to the workflow of using this design automation environment. Uh, Autocomplete is enabled for the following. So when using Inventor parameters, iLogic objects and functions, Inventor API objects and .NET objects, you'll find that you now get an autocomplete option. You'll also find that the, uh, there's a use the or a new option to be able to use syntax coloring. And this is from the options tab in the rule editor where you can set the color, color scheme. And there's two options available to you to use. There's a classic and there's also a modern. And it's up to you to choose either one that you um, prefer. So let's have a quick look at some of these and the way that they apply to a typical workflow. Um, so we've shown numerous new features enhancements to the model based definition previously in the previous two releases. So in Inventor 2018.2, they did go on to enhance this. So you can now export the model dice definition, the annotations as part of a DWF file and that's viewable with inside of Autodesk Design Review. You'll also know that 3D PDF export has been enhanced with the reference geometry across multiple faces. You'll notice when you choose the annotation it does reference all impacted surfaces or faces. 
Uh, you'll notice, as we discussed before, that with the sheet metal bend rules, which can be applied across bends uh, with on the same component, you can now resync these so that they all use a common unfold uh, rule, as, other than a uh, individual ones. If you've uh, if you want to revert back to it, uh, iLogic workflows have been improved. So under the options table. Uh, you now get the option to be able to change from classic to modern for syntax display. There's now a header area that's available with inside of this environment as well. So you can add a header area in, in your design and you can also mouse over or hover over functions, statements or variables and learn more about the syntax. And as discussed as well, there's new autocomplete functionality as well and this helps speed up the process of either entering variables and parameters or code but it also reduces the likelihood of errors as well. Uh, whilst we're here, if you haven't really investigated using iLogic, now is a really good time to do so with a lot of the enhancements that have been made in this area. Uh, there are a lot of customers across and users across Australia and New Zealand, uh, as well as around the globe, that are using this to speed up repetitive tasks and create custom dialog boxes that enable them to quickly and easily define their, their, their products. So, Definitely um, something to look at if you haven't already investigated this in the past. Um, now, moving on to look at expanded interoperability, and we've seen a, a number of enhancements to this in the way that we can work with uh, a variety of different design data. And the 2018.2 release of Inventor is no different. Uh, there is, firstly, there's support for, um, or you know, improvements in the DWG underlay and the way that it's handled. Previously, once you created a dimension on a DWG underlay geometry, the point that attaches to the geometry could not be attached to a different point. But now you can drag the dimension boundary uh, line and attach that point to a different piece of geometry. So it gives you the, the ability to be able to redefine uh, the allocation of that geometry. You can also resolve missing any CAD references so previously, uh, if the reference was lost, uh, you were unable to reassign that. Um, but now you can reassign that using the unresolve uh, option. Now that happens typically when you open a document and it can't find the reference, it'll actually prompt you with the uh, unresolved uh, option. Um, but if you dismiss that and then later on you want to resolve that, what you can do is you can just right click the top um, node of the browser and then choose the option Resolve File, and that'll give you the option to be able to relink through to the file that you were referencing. Uh, and furthermore, there's been some um, additions we saw in the in an earlier release that Solid Edge was added, and the ability to be able to reference Inventor uh, files of the previous version back to the from using 2017.4, open a 2018 uh, file. Well, with the Inventor 2018.2 release, you can now work with Fusion 360 as part of a collaborative workflow. So let's have a quick look at that. So just so everyone knows, and, and many of you are probably aware of this, you may already be using it as part of a workflow. Fusion 360 uh, is a cloud-based system that works with Fusion Team, which is the cloud platform that's central to the, you know, the management of files and projects with Fusion. Um, once you uh, install a new um, piece of technology called the Autodesk Desktop Connector, you can now access Fusion 360 files from your local, from a local file folder. So this will synchronize files locally down to your local workstation. And through that, you can open up those files inside of Inventor, or you can potentially even share your information from Inventor through Diffusion as part of an AnyCAD connected workflow. So this works in either direction. So if you're an Inventor user and you want to share your design with a Fusion user, or if you're a Fusion user and you want to consume the designs of an Inventor user, then you can do that. Uh, you might do this for rendering, you might do it because of add additive manufacturing workflows, you might do it to use CAM or, or even cloud solving simulation. Um, but it also happens the other way as well. So if you're a Fusion user and you want to pass your information down to Inventor or if you're using Inventor and you want to consume uh, Fusion data, you can also do that as well. You might do this because 
of you have a requirement to use Fusion's industrial design, maybe it's freeform capabilities, you might be looking at some of the new electronic CAD or ECAD workflows that have been recently announced, or it might be just simply for the fact that the Fusion user is part of your supply chain and you're just consuming their technology or their files. Now, let's have a look at, at, at a couple of ways this can be used. So in this first case, we've got Fusion. We're designing a little um, grip or handle for a, a fishing reel. And, uh, and what we've done is we've gone designed that inside of uh, Fusion. Now, um, using the, the Desktop Connector app, we can then synchronize this inside of Inventor. And we're using effectively an AnyCAD reference of that Fusion 360 file, which is associative. So if we go back into having inserted into our Inventor assembly, go back into Fusion, make some design changes. When we come back inside of Inventor, it will synchronize to our local machine and then update the reference file with inside of Inventor. So a really nice workflow of being able to capture that downstream consumption of Fusion files with inside of the Inventor environment. What happens if you want to go the other way? So what happens if you want to take an Inventor file and actually use it inside of Fusion 360? Well, we can do that as well. So here we've got an Inventor file that, again, has been synchronized up to Fusion Team uh, using the desktop connector. And this can then can be consumed into uh, Fusion. And, and much the same happens as we saw in the previous video. If I go back inside of Inventor, I make a change to my design and I synchronize that file then back up to Fusion Team, or when that happens, uh, you'll notify that I'm notified inside of Fusion 360 when that change takes place, and that update fall, uh, falls through or follows through into any downstream fe features and functionality that I've used in design, in this case for CAM. So again, it is really highlighting that connected workflow. Now, one thing to point, point out before I move on, uh, and this is, you know, this is a very quick look at what can be a quite a complex, um, you know, uh, topic. Um, is the fact that this is in, isn't a, it is bi-directional, but it is one-directional. So you can't open a Fusion file, a Fusion 360 file inside of Inventor, make some changes to that Inventor file, or that Fusion file inside of Inventor, and then push that change back to Fusion 360. Uh, changes flow one direction only from Fusion to Inventor or from Inventor to Fusion, but not in both directions. And that's the way that the uh, technology has been released at this stage. Okay, so um, furthermore, uh, if we move on to then look about the experience, and again, this comes back to in, in customer requests based on their feedback and their usage of the product on ways that we can enhance the use of Inventor. The 2018.2 release saw a number of you know, great enhancements. Uh, firstly, we saw the measure tool had been updated in the 2018.1 release. The 2018.2 uh, further uh, developed on those uh, enhancements, including uh, functionality for accumulating values in the measure dialog. Uh, and this has been improved from previous technology that had been available. You can now add uh, values of linear area, volume, and angle, and you can have a uh, calculated total for each of those. Uh, for every measurement type you want to accumulate, first make a selection in the graphics window, and then you simply hit the, the, the plus sign associated with that, and that will then go through about grouping those together and, and accumulating them. Each value can be quickly added or deleted from the accumulate list, and each accumulated property group can be individually deleted as well. Another few other different things. Now, ground and root, um, there was a single click option. It was under the assembly environment productivity ground and root component. This command ground, grounded, moved, and used flush constraints to root the selected component to the origin of the assembly. Um, this has actually been broken down. So rather than being a one-click command, it's now a dialog box that opens up, enables you to select multiple components, but also go through the process of selecting which options you want to incorporate as part of that ground and root component. So you'll see there that there's three options, grounded origin, create root flush constraints, and reposition the component as the first browser node. You can individually select which of those options you want included as part of that process. Uh, support for editing suppressed constraints has also been added. 
So if you're trying to edit a constraint that is suppressed, typically, typically you would have to unsuppress it, then modify it, and then resuppress it again. Uh, you don't have to do that. You can actually uh, edit a suppressed constraint, change um, you know, maybe an offset value or the constraint type, uh, exit the dialog box, and that will impact that suppressed feature. And also, if, in particular, if you're creating sales and marketing content, uh, you'll love the new enhancements associated with the ability to be able to export an image with a transparent background, and this impacts uh, the three file types of PNG, bitmap, and TIFF files. Uh, furthermore, there's a number of other enhancements. So the sketch, uh, there's some changes associated with this. Uh, so when you use uh, a new setting, and this is under Tools, the Tools tab, Options panel, Application Options in Sketch tab, there's now an option in there called Auto Scale Sketch Geometry on Initial, initial Dimension. And this is to, to, to control the scale of a sketch that you might have put in place when you initially place that first dimension. It's quite common for you to place the first dimension and it to completely um, change the geometry shape of that sketch. Well, this maintains the geometry shape associated. Uh, sketch visibility icon has been added to the mini toolbar, so you can click on a feature and then and turn on the sketch visible um, or the, the sketch that's been used to create that geometry so that it's visible so you don't have to go hunting around and try and find it and turn it on manually. Uh, the hatch creation um, option within sort of the drawing environment has been enhanced. Previously you could only apply hatch to one specific area of uh, drawing view. Now you can apply it across multiple areas in the one um, instance. And the content center has been enhanced through the quick search uh, environment. You can now search for members, uh, not just families, inside of this area. So when you're looking for a particular specific instance of a, you know, a, a content center uh, product, then you should more easily find that than what you're able to do so in the past. So again, let's have a quick look at what this workflow looks like. Uh, and with the Inventor 2018 release, there have been numerous customer requests and enhancements. And again, I'd like to highlight um, that these come from users. Um, starting with the measure tool, uh, in this release, we've added the accumulate uh, capabilities. And notice the ability to be able to include or exclude specific selections. And you'll note there that you can hit the, the plus beside them. So you can actually go around and select multiple entities and then add them to the Accumulate after you've done so and remove them if you want to as well. Um, <clears throat> now, the other uh, change that they've made is to do with, uh, oh, sorry, the, the surfacing. So you'll notice that you can also choose surfaces as part of the Accumulate. You'll notice that there are dual units being displayed there as well. Now, there are options for showing dual units of both Imperial and Metric, but you can change this to show uh, only one if that's the way that you choose to do it. As we discussed before, often you'll place that initial sketch in your design, you'll go place a dimension, and that dimension will completely change the shape of the object. If you change that auto scale, auto scale sketch geometries on initial dimension option inside of the system options, you will find that it will maintain the shape. We mentioned before the ability to be able to click on a feature, and then using the mini toolbar, you've got the option to make sketch visible. This will bring up the sketch that's been used to create that geometry, enabling you to uh, uh, more easily and faster find that information and modify it. Ground and root is now accessible from the assembly tab, and this enables you to ground one or more components. Remember that the options that are available for this are broken down so that you can actually adjust them individually. Uh, you will also find that um, uh, chamfers have, um, have changed as well. So, oops, sorry, no, this is the, um, uh, the suppress uh, feature. So in this instance, if you want to suppress a constraint, you can do that. But you can also then modify that suppress constraint, which in previous releases would have required you to unsuppress the constraint, modify the constraint, and then resuppress it. Now, the chamfer has actually been changed as well. Uh, the way that it's viewed and displayed on the screen You'll notice here that you actually, instead of getting a line representation, you get a, a more visual representation of what that change uh, is going to impact your design. You'll find, as we discussed before, inside of Content Center, that finding specific par uh, parts has been made easier through the quick search. 
and you can now not only look for families but also members which gives you the ability to be able to look at a more granular level of the components that you're actually trying to find. And moving on to the drawing environment, as we said, uh, you know, traditionally if you wanted to hatch a specific region of your drawing, you would have to do this in multiple steps, whereas in the, the in, with inside of Inventor 2018.2, you can now do that as one process. And finally, uh, as we discussed before, anyone that's creating marketing or sales material uh, will love this new feature, which enables you to create an image which has got a transparent background. So it's unique to, be, to the creation of PNG, bitmap and TIFF files. But you can see there under options, you've got the ability of to turn on a transparent background that enables you to bring the geometry into uh, you know, an existing document that might already have a color gradient in the background. So again, some fantastic updates to Inventor 2018.2, all coming from customer requests. So let's have a quick look at a summary of the changes that have taken place, again with the 2018 and 2018.1 uh, inclusions already there. With that, under the professional grade design functionality, we have iLogic autocomplete and syntax uh, colors. We have the changes around sheet metal and the unfold rules and the ability to be able to link those back to one common one. We have the changes to MBD or model based definition around 3D PDF and DWF enhancements. We also had the AnyCAD for Fusion 360, which has been added to the expanded interoperability which expanded on what was already a quite a comprehensive list of updates in that area of the, um, the, the product. And then we saw again numerous examples of the way that the development team has focused on improving the inventor experience through a number of user ideas that have, um, that have come from users such as yourselves using the software. Okay, so that basically sort of wraps up a lot of the technology. I do want to highlight a couple of things though before we go. So um, before hanging up, just hold on for a moment. Uh, firstly, how can you get more information uh, about how you can contribute to the development of Inventor, how you can get updates of the software and, and the likes. So firstly, if you're looking for more information about the changes, you'll find that by going to the Autodesk Knowledge Network. Now a simple Google search for what's new in Inventor 2018 will effectively direct you to this location. And this is where an article including a, a summary of the changes plus more in-depth information will highlight the changes. And recognizing that there are more uh, changes that will be shown in this document than I've actually gone through today because they were limited on time and, and availability. Um, Another way of getting to this location is with inside of Inventor. So if you go into, if you've installed 2018 and you're wondering what's changed, if you go to the Get Started tab, you'll know, notice that there's What's New option there. If you click on that, that should take you to roughly the same location that was previously shown. How can you contribute though to the development of Inventor? And you saw there that a, new, a number, you know, a pro, probably if you actually add it up based on the number of updates that I've gone through today, as many as half of those have possibly come from user requests and feedback on the software. Now the first thing you can do is, well, understand that there is a place for you to put all this information if you don't already know, and that's called the idea station, the inventor idea station. Most products have got an idea station, so you need to recognize that it's the inventor idea station. Now I've put a, a short link there, bit.ly, forward slash inventor idea station. What you can do is just do a search, Google search for inventor idea station, that should get you to there. Um, you'll log in using your Autodesk uh, credentials, which will then give you the ability to be able to vote up any existing ideas, but more importantly, be able to contribute your own ideas towards the development of the product. And you'll notice there that this is, if you actually go there, you'll notice that there's quite an active community of people that are submitting improvements and ways to improve the software. Uh, there's a list of hot ideas, so trending ideas, as well as top ideas that people have been voting on as well. What else? There's the beta program as well. Maybe you want to participate actually in the development of the, of the, the software, providing early feedback uh, to those types of ideas that are being considered for future release but also early release of the software to actually do some testing and provide feedback on the workflows and functionality that's being 
implemented into the software. You can do that by going to beta.autodesk.com, signing up again using your Autodesk credentials, requesting access to the Inventor Beta program, and on approval then you'll get access to be able to participate in that process. Finally, how can you get access to all of these, these changes? Well, if you're on subscription or you're on maintenance, active maintenance, uh, then you will get access to these changes. Now, one of the best ways of getting access is using what's called the Autodesk Desktop app. Some of you have probably already noticed it. It's down the bottom right hand corner of your Windows desktop and it keeps track of all of the new uh, updates that are available for any Autodesk software that you've got installed locally on your machine. Uh, and this includes Inventor. Uh, realistically, uh, you can install Inventor new releases, the initial release, in this case the 2018, and subsequent updates that have come out in as little as a, a few clicks. Uh, it is really, a, a, you know, I, I love the experience of going in and noticing that I've got two or three products that have recently had updates released to them and the satisfaction of clicking a few buttons and then half an hour noticing that, that those applications have been updated. Now, if you're not one for using uh, this and you want to revert to a more manual process of doing uh, the updates, you can access the updates from the your Autodesk account. So if you go to manage.autodesk.com, again, log in using your credentials. You should find the entitlement for Inventor if you've got an active subscription or maintenance contract for it. Uh, will be uh, will be available there and you can download any of those updates that you're entitled to from there. Otherwise, um, I'll thank you for your time uh, today. It's been a, about an hour. It's been a big session. I've tried to put through as much information as I can. Um, please, if you've got any questions though, of um, one, uh, feel free to reach out to me. I'm at the, down the bottom of the screen there, my email address. Uh, if you would like to get some further information about uh, the updates or any other information that you might be wanting, feel free to reach out to me either via email or connect with me on LinkedIn, which I'm quite active on. Uh, furthermore, if you want to, please feel free to reach out to your local resellers in your region. If you're not sure um, who your reseller is um, or you're looking to find local resellers, there are a number of resources available to you, including uh, the contact list of local resellers available from the Autodesk website. Uh, and finally as well, if you're looking for further information about Autodesk Inventor and some of the new enhancements and some of the other uh, features and functionality, the product page link is available there as well. Otherwise, I just want to say thank you so much for your time today uh, during lunch. Uh, I hope you've enjoyed some of the new features in the 2018 release of Inventor so far and I appreciate your time and uh, hopefully we'll see you next time. Bye for now.